Welcome to the first tutorial in a new three-part mini-series in which we'll be sharing tips for quickly creating and populating procedural balconies. In the first part we'll use Railclone to generate the balcony geometry. In the second we'll scatter objects on the balconies using Forest Pack and finally in the third tutorial we'll add some hanging plants using Forest Ivy. In this tutorial, as I said, we'll focus on using Railclone to generate balcony geometry including the railing, the deck and the metal framework that holds it to the wall. Because it's Railclone, the size and the shape will always remain adjustable. You can follow along with this tutorial whether you have Railclone Pro or Railclone Lite. However, if you are using Railclone Lite, you'll just need to split your balcony into multiple Railclone objects each time I add a new generator. To kick things off, let's create the railing. We'll set up the object, import our scene geometry and configure the generator. So start by creating a new rail clone object and open the style editor. Select the spline and three pieces of geometry from the scene that we'll be using to construct the railing. Right click in the style editor and select import scene selection. Add a new linear generator and then wire the spline to the spline input. Connect the post segment to the corner input. If you zoom in, you'll notice that the geometry deforms around corners. To fix this, go to the segment settings and turn off bend and slice. So the geometry is no longer bending, but it is bisecting the corner angles instead of remaining straight. So go to the generator's rules settings and turn off align to path under the corner section to fix it. Why are the same segment to the evenly input? This will distribute extra posts at evenly spaced distances along the spline. You can adjust the spacing under the generator's rules evenly tab. Now add the pickets geometry to the default input. You'll notice that the segments are sliced where they meet a post, which we don't want. So to fix this, go to the generator's settings and go to the segment default rule. Change it to adaptive so that each segment is subtly rescaled to create even spacing and a more optimised style. Near the posts, the gaps between the vertical bars will appear to be smaller. To compensate, we can add a Compose operator after the post node. This allows you to kind of glue together multiple geometry pieces. In this case, we'll insert a spacer segment before and after each post. You can adjust the order as needed using the up and down arrow buttons. And if you find a segment is sticking out through the corners for some reason, Turn off the setting that tries to continue default segments around corners. You'll find this in the Generator's Rules tab and you change it by setting the bevel mode to None. So now we've got our basic railing, but it's time to fine tune the alignment and make room for doors and windows by removing the railing from the wall side of the balcony. So the railing shouldn't sit directly on the ground, only the posts will be directly on the ground. To fix this, we'll adjust the Z alignment to pivot for all the segments except the post, so that the guardrail floats slightly above the surface. To make the railing appear only on three sides of the balcony, select the spline and change the material ID. Now in Rail Clone, we can go to a Generator's Limits tab and turn on Limit to Material ID. Entering an ID here allows you to control exactly where you want a railing to appear. So with the railing complete, let's move on to create the balcony deck itself. We'll do this using two generators, one to add the deck and another to add a capping piece around the edge. So clone the existing linear generator just to save a bit of work and then delete the existing inputs. Import the capping geometry into the graph and wire it to the default input. You'll see the geometry stretches incorrectly and that's because we disabled the bevel mode when we created the railings. So to fix it, re-enable it by going to the generator's corner settings and changing the mode to reset. Make sure that the capping piece is aligned correctly by adjusting the Y axis alignment to top. Now let's add the deck, so add a 2D generator and connect the same spline to the clipping area input. Enable Extend XY Sized Area so that the generator automatically adjusts its size to each individual closed subspline. Change the hierarchy checking mode to None. In this mode, each individual subspline is considered a separate array. Lastly, wire the deck geometry to the default input and we have a balcony. If you look, the railing sits on top of the spline and so the deck should be positioned just below the spline. So to fix this, go to the segment settings and change the Z alignment option to top for the deck and for the capping. To finish the balcony structure, we'll now add the main structural metal supports underneath. 
So we'll import the three segments for the metal support into the rail clean graph. There's a start piece, a default stretchable piece, and a corner segment. Once again, we'll clone the existing linear generator and remove any inputs except for the spline. And then connect the corner segment to the corner input and enable beveling to prevent bending. Then wire the default piece to the default input and change the default mode to adaptive. Wire the bracket segment to the start and the end inputs. If you look at the end, you'll notice that it faces the wrong way. So to fix this, we can use a mirror operator to flip it on the X axis. To fix gaps between the segments and the plates, adjust the padding values for the start segment. Use the settings in the segment node for the start piece, but add a new transform node for independent control of the end padding, since it needs to be different from the start. To make sure all the segments align correctly on the z-axis, if needed, adjust the z-alignment to pivot or center, depending on how you've set up your geometry. The metal supports should be below the deck. To fix this, I'm going to go to the generator settings and adjust the z-offset value until they're correctly positioned. Your balcony system is now complete, featuring railings, a deck and metal supports. And because it's parametric, you can easily create balconies of various sizes simply by modifying the original spline. You can even change the shape by adding additional vertices. To populate an entire building with balconies, in this case I'll use 3ds Max's array operator. Of course you may already have splines in your scene, and they may all be different sizes and shapes, and Railclaim works brilliantly with these kinds of setups. But for now, let's create a large number of balconies using this single spline. You'll notice it already has a material ID correctly assigned as we demonstrated earlier. Next, apply the array modifier and increase the x-axis spacing until the balconies are correctly placed. Adjust the count to cover the entirety of the building's facade. This facade has staggered balconies, so to get that effect we'll go to the transform settings and set the mode to alternating. Then adjust the z offset so that the splines on the second floor so that every other balcony moves up to fill the second floor. Then let's return to the distribution settings and increase the z count and adjust the z spacing as needed. Now you can go to Railclone's base objects rollout and swap the spline. The whole building will be filled with balconies. Before wrapping up, let's make some final adjustments and prepare this model for rendering. For a start, to use the materials from the source geometry, go to the Railclone object style rollout and select use segment materials. And if you want a more accurate view of your final model in the viewports, go to the display rollout and switch to quick mesh mode. And really that's it. Although it takes an extra few minutes to create, the great thing about this setup is that as the project progresses, if the balcony size or shape needs to change, you can simply edit the spline and the whole system will automatically update everywhere. And don't forget to save your style to the library so you can quickly reuse it at any time. In the next tutorial, we'll show you how to use Forest Pack to fill these balconies with scattered plants, umbrellas, chairs, or any other objects. Because they're driven by the same set of splines, you can update the whole system in one go. See you there.